Hi, welcome to Why I Like Houdini 4. Disclaimer, this video is a non-edited recording. It has mistakes, it is maybe sometimes a bit slow, it is not scripted, I make it up as I go along. The series is a very brief introduction to Houdini concepts, it's not a classic click-along tutorial. I think it is important when learning Houdini to know about the different available tools and concepts. I show what I like and I try to explain why I like something. I also try to mention things that confused me when I started learning Houdini. And yeah, here I'm learning recording tutorials. So what's this tutorial about? It's about proceduralism and this node thing and um, it's about parametric versus procedural versus static. Um, parenting is mentioned because um, some of the links between the nodes are, yeah, I come to that later. Um, operators, basically um, all those nodes are operators. Um, I'm going to talk about VOPs, which is VEX operators. VEX is uh, Houdini's, um, one of Houdini's own programming languages and I'm talking about COPS and also about ROPS. COPS is compositing operators, OP is always operators and Houdini has its own special language and you just have to somehow get used to it. It can get quite confusing. Um, in the end I like it because I don't always have to say VEX operators, I can just say VOPS or COPS for compositing operators. I think that the people at side effects are a little bit um, lazy when it comes to talking, so they have abbreviations for everything. So let's dive into Houdini. Um, static objects. A static object or static geometry hasn't got any parameters that you can change, um, whereby of course, you can scale this or translate this, but that doesn't make it a parametric object. Let's show a parametric object. That would be that cube. And the user interface up here doesn't change. You actually have to dive into the node. And um, the box is the one that has got the focus. And this one actually has got axis divisions which makes it a parametric object. I can change the amount of axis divisions. Um, the grid is another example. It has got rows and columns, and you can change the parameter rows. It gets more rows, less rows. So that's parametric objects. And then, and this is why I really, really like Houdini, there is those procedurals. Let's dive into this, double-click the node, and I build this little, really, really <laughs> basic procedural setup. Um, what it does is, there is a grid with all those points, and there is a box, which is a, those two parametric objects um, go into a copy to points node, or a SOP, for surface operator um, and what it does is it uses the points of the grid and puts a box onto each point. You might say yeah this is something I could also do with an array I, that doesn't need to be parametric and yeah you're right but what you can't do is just simply um, use a sphere instead of the box or use the box instead of the grid um, let's give this more divisions. Yeah, so this is a procedural object. The procedure is copy objects to points. Could be much more complicated and um, one of the indicators for this being procedural might be that this is like a, like a Y shape, you know? So you have data coming in from one side and from another side, opposed to a concept where you have a stack 
and um, you have an object and you put a modifier on top or something like this or like the layers in Photoshop um, or in another compositing software. Yeah, so this is proceduralism. Let's talk about the nodes now. So go back to the static object, to that little pig which is supplied by side effects. Very nice. You have like a few objects that can be used as uh, simple test objects. I could have actually used the pig head in the procedural example as well, but I didn't. So what do those nodes do? On this level, they have nothing to do with proceduralism. So those lines in between nodes are um, links. They're more like a parroting and child setup. So when I select the parent of those two lights and I rotate this parent, both lights turn. So on this level, the connections are um, linking objects. Let's dive into the procedural node. Let's turn off the static one, turn on the procedural one, go in here. In here, it's a data flow. And for that, you have something really cool, which is called the geometry spreadsheet, a very cool concept, I think. And whatever node is active, it will show you the data that's in this node. This is currently ter um, turned to primitive. Let's take this to make this a polygon and actually just show the sphere to not confuse you. Zoom in a bit. So there's all those points and they show up in the spreadsheet. And there is also the primitives. And all this data goes into this node, gets combined with the data of this node, and produces this out output. And again, uh, yeah, it's uh, doo -doo -doo. yeah. Um, so the data flows through here, um, and it's always the same data. All those nodes have an input of the same data and an output of the same sort of data. The data gets changed, but the the data structure is always the same. When you click on Node Info, this comes up and it shows you, it tells you there's points, primitives, vertices, polygons, and they have some attributes. Really cool, actually, to be able to show this. You can pin this, whatever. <laughs> That's uh, part of a different tutorial, maybe. Um, but I actually made something here. I made a little uh, little tool myself that moves the points around. So the box object gets completely stretched. What it actually does is when I when I um, enter this node by double clicking, I go into this, comes up with this network, and this is another place where the where you have a new type of nodes. Those are actually um, this is now VOPs, um, VEX operators, and it basically only one point which has a position, gets um, the, and to that position I add a noise and the position is outputted again. That's what that little P is for. Let's actually maximize this for a second and really look at this. So lots of points get in here, but at a time only one point is processed. Well, it's actually parallel, which is the cool thing, but you can build your own um, operators in VEX or with a visual representation of the VEX programming language. So let's show you 
other places where nodes are used in Houdini. You also have compositing in Houdini and it's, uh, it's not Nuke, but it's very powerful nonetheless. And um, so what I'm doing here is um, I have two images and the third image was just a mask and yeah, and they're just blended by um, an alpha mask of that image. So here you have nodes that output images or pixels and you can um, do a lot that you can do in normal compositing. When you press a tab key, you see what you can do, add screen, subtract, the usual blur, bump, denoise, whatever. There's many, many, many nodes that you can use. And, of course, you can build your own nodes. And for that, you need a Vopcop, again, Vex operator, compositing operator, filter. And when you dive in here, it looks very similar again. And actually, for example, the noise that I used in the other example, I think it was the anti-alias noise, is exactly the same noise. So you, it's obviously because it's pixels now, it's not uh, points and positions anymore. You have all those different um, inputs here. and But in general, it's one pixel going in, something is done to it, one pixel is going out. And this way, you can build your own filters or generators that generate images with the same um, visual language, VOPs, VEX operators that you have, were using in manipulating geometry, which is really cool. It's always, it's always the same, yeah. And the same goes for the material um, context. So here, this is where you build shaders. And um, to start with, quickly look into the material builder. And again, it looks sort of the same, but in here you are actually manipulating um, the rendering. So the color that is being produced at a certain position of a point and so on. So you can build your own shaders, but Houdini already comes with shaders and this is sort of like the top level. Um, and pretty new in Houdini 16.5 you have this material level. It's really, really confusing that it says Vex Builder here, but okay. Houdini side effects people are special. But what I do here in material level is I connect to the principal shader texture and the texture needs UV coordinates. So this is like sort of building shaders at a more um, general level and when you dive into the material builder here you can really build your own shader like your own lightning model or your own shadow model or wh whatever or your own procedural texture and you can combine all this you can layer this up which is also extremely cool I really love uh, Mantra and I think it's the best integrated renderer there is. It's actually not integrated, it's built into it. So what's the takeaway of this uh, tutorial? Um, I was talking about static, parametric and procedural objects. And remember the procedural idea is copying, no, it's uh, <laughs> It's having a procedure that does something and um, it's sort of generalized. So you can um, use this operation that you build yourself and exchange the input data. And um, the other takeaway is that uh, the so-called VOPs, let's dive into this VOP again, um, they're everywhere in Houdini. And they're always the same. So the cool thing is I started learning Houdini actually with in um, with materials and because that's sort of my thing. And when I had learned the material VEX 
operator VOP way of thinking. I was, it's really easy for me to go to um, the compositing world and build my own filters. It's really easy for me now to go into the object or geometry world and build my own VOPs because it's always the same. This is, I think, great, and I love Houdini for that. It's not like an interface um, or a, a concept of an interface, I should say, because there are differences. Like on one, in one context, you are working with uh, positions of points in space, and in compositing, you're working with pixels, and in materials, you're working even with rays, and you're working with surface normals and whatever <laughs> yeah so um but it's still the same interface and um that confused me in, in the beginning a little bit um because you never know where you are because it all looks the same but it's great and um i really love that so i hope you take away something from this lesson and um maybe it's not even a lesson it's uh a real broad introduction to Houdini that I'm trying to do here in a quick way. So thanks for watching, everybody, and um, have a nice day.